Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace an old traditional receptacle with a new decora style receptacle. Along with this, I will also change the wall plate. Now this video is especially for absolute beginners and DIYers because I'm going to include all the necessary steps involved in replacing an outlet like this. So stay tuned. This is an important caution. The procedure shown in this video is for information and education purposes only. If you are not comfortable working with electrical wiring or electrical equipment, I would strongly suggest that you hire a licensed electrician. Before undertaking any kind of electrical work, always make sure that you follow your local electrical safety code. Here is my small disclaimer. This video is not sponsored by the manufacturer of any Decora style receptacles or outlets. I bought these with my own money and I am not being paid to promote any of their products. Before I start, let me show you some tools that I will be using to replace this outlet. A flathead screwdriver, a Phillip head screwdriver, or if you have a multi-bit screwdriver like this, that would be nice. A long nose plier, a wire cutter, wire stripper, some wire nuts of different sizes. I personally would prefer to use Vago 11 nut connectors. If you have them, nice. If you don't have them, then it's okay. Black electrical insulation tape. A non-contact voltage tester like this. This is from Klein Tools. An outlet or receptacle tester like this. This one is from Klein Tools. It's not very expensive. A small length of 14-2 or 12-2 wire. We will need it for making pigtails. A small night lamp like this just in case you do not have this type of outlet tester. Safety first, I will go and turn off the circuit breaker. But before doing that, I will insert my client tools outlet tester into the receptacle. So when I come back, I will know that the power has been shut off. These two orange lights indicate that the receptacle is getting power right now. When I turn off the circuit breaker, these two lights should go off. I just turned off the circuit breaker and you might have noticed that these two lights are off now. I can now safely remove the wall plate and the outlet. With a flathead screwdriver, remove the wall plate screw. At this point, I will use my client tools non-contact voltage tester to make sure that there is no power in the outlet box. Turn it on. If there is any power, this green light will turn red. Check on both sides. The tester did not beep. This light did not turn red. So it is safe to remove these two screws and take out the old receptacle. Here I will need a Phillip head screwdriver. I can now pull out the old receptacle. So what I notice here is that there are two white wires on one side, two neutrals and two black wires on this side. One of this pair, one black and one white, is bringing in power, is the line in, and the other pair, one black and one white, is taking power to the next receptacle. I can also notice that one of these wires is burnt out. And because this is an old house, the wires are not copper, they are aluminum wires. Next, I will remove all five wires. For this, I will need a Phillip head screwdriver. That doesn't work, so I will have to use a flathead screwdriver. The ground wire. With a needle nose plier, remove the wires. Aluminum wire, it broke. gauge wire, I will use the wire stripper and strip the wires again. This wire is good, I will not cut it. Just cut the extra length, I need only about half an inch. Straighten the wires, keep about half an inch and cut out the rest one. I need to strip this white wire again. On the new receptacle, the two black wires will be connected to these two brass screws. 
two white wires, white neutrals will be connected to the silver screw here. We will connect the ground wire to the screen screw. Now for connecting two white wires and two black wires, we can go the old way like we removed the wires. One white wire here and one white wire here. Also on this side one black wire here and one black wire here. But I would prefer to use pigtail here. First I will make a pigtail, connect them and then I will tell you why I used pigtails for both hot and neutral wires. For making pigtails for both black and white wires, I have taken small pieces of each wire and they are about 5 inches each. I have already stepped one side of these wires to about half an inch. I will now step the other side also. This is a 14 gauge wire. Make sure if the existing wire is 12 gauge wire, you will need 12 gauge wire again. And in that case, the receptacle will also be a 20 ampere receptacle. Just about half an inch. That should be enough. Now to connect these three black wires, I will use a 3 pin Vogo lever nut connector. If you want, you can also use wire nuts like this. In that case, you will join the wires, twist them first with a plier and, and tighten the wire nut on that. Insert my black wire first and then insert these two black wires. Push them all the way in and press the lever. Pull them and make sure none of the wires is loose. You can also check on the back side. The bare copper or aluminum wire should go all the way up to the top. I will now make a small S loop and push this inside the box. I will just keep one black wire here. So that's all I need for now. I will use another 3 pin Vago lever nut connector to connect these three white wires. Push the wire all the way in and press the lever. Pull it a bit to make sure it's not loose. I will keep this one out and push the connector as well as these two wires inside the box. Keep this out. To connect the new receptacle, just remember that the black wire is connected to the brass screws on this side. And you can also see a smaller slot here. And the white wire is connected to the silver screw here. And you can see a longer slot here and make sure this circular slot remains at bottom. So when you look at the receptacle from front, the longer slot is on the left side and the shorter slot is on the right side. Here we have two options to connect the wire. We can just push in the wire into this small hole that is called backstabbing. Most electricians do not prefer that method. The other method is to make a small loop, wrap the wire around this screw and then tighten the screw. I will use that method. Take a long nose plier, hold the wire from the end and just rotate it like this. That makes a small nice hook. Do the same to the neutral wire. Ground wire, we already have a hook here. I will connect the ground wire first, then neutral and then the line wire in the end. Keep the hook in a clockwise direction in the same direction as you will tighten the screw. Use a Phillip head screwdriver to tighten the screw and tighten it firmly. Next the white wire. And make sure you are tightening the white wire to the silver screw. If the second screw is loose, is coming out, make sure you tighten it. Next we will connect the black hot wire. Clockwise direction. Press this a bit so that it does not come out when you tighten the screw. Now this screw we should not leave it loose like this. Especially when we have a metal box this may accidentally touch the metal and the line will get grounded and it will create a short circuit a hazard. So tighten it. Our connections are done. It's time to tell you why I did not connect two blacks here and two whites over there. Why I used a pigtail. Reason is very simple. When we use a pigtail, the incoming power does not have to travel through this receptacle to the next receptacles. It goes straight. So tomorrow if something happens to this receptacle, if it burns out or gets overloaded or something, the other receptacles down the line, they are not affected. So this receptacle remains isolated. 
and because this box is a metal box i will use two or three wraps of black tape around the screws to make sure that any of the wires does not touch the ground or the metal box accidentally the screws are completely covered with black insulation tape it's time to position the wires and tighten the screws when you tighten the screws, make sure that the rectangular slots are up and the circular slot is facing down. Align the screws and use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten these screws. Now before I formally tighten these screws, I would like to turn on the circuit breaker and check that I did not make any mistakes in the wiring. So once again I will leave my client tools outlet tester plugged into this new receptacle and when I come back these two orange lights should be on. I just turned on the circuit breaker and you can see two orange lights are on which means that the wiring is correct. And you can see here two orange lights means correct wiring. If this is not the case then I would have to open it and inspect all the wiring again. Right now the wiring is correct. So this upper one I have tested it is working well. Let me check the bottom one as well. This one is also working fine. If you do not have this kind of tester and you only have a non-contact forte tester you can test with this as well. Turn it on. The blinking light indicates that there is some current in here. No, nothing here. If you do not have the outlet tester or the non-contact voltage tester, you can test the new receptacle with a small night lamp like this. Works fine. Bottom one works fine. So this can also serve the purpose. I can now tighten these screws and install a new wall plate. Just make sure it is straight and do not over tight. I will need a flat head screwdriver to tighten the wall plate. Check one more time. All good. The bottom one. All good. So this is my new Leviton Decora style receptacle. So this installation is successful. Everything is good here, but we still have one more step to go. If you remember, there were two pairs of black and white wires in this outlet box. That means one pair was bringing in power to this box and one pair was taking the power out. In order to make sure that we did not make any mistake, it is always good to check the outlet upstream as well as the outlet downstream. That will make sure that those two are still working. This outlet here is the upstream outlet. Power is going to the other outlet from here. To make sure that it's working, I have a table lamp connected here. I'll turn it on. Still working. So all good. And this is the second outlet downstream that I need to check. If you notice two orange lights are on, that means this one is also good. So this project is complete now. It is successful and you can see the two orange lights here. I hope the video is helpful. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you leave. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Until then, please take care.